Welcome to Meet the Amazon Leader, a new series where we speak with top executives at Amazon to learn about their path, passions, and perspectives. Today, we're joined by Steph Perego, Amazon's Vice President of Customer Fulfillment and Global Operations Services. Steph, thanks for being with us. It's a pleasure. Ciao. So you have such an interesting career, and we're going to dive into it all today. Good. But let's start at the beginning. Tell us a little bit more about you and about your professional career. So I started in Amazon in 2011, and the first job I did was to launch our Italian operations. Then we launched and supported Spain. The year after, took Italy, France, and Spain, created the South European region, and doubled the size. Uh, then I moved to Seattle as a technical advisor in 2016 uh, for a senior vice president of our global operations. Moved back to Europe and took the, a big network, the UK network. Um, and starting from 2020, I took our European region. 2022, I took the current job, and the current job covers North America, Europe customer fulfillment as well as our global operation services. So everything from real estate, procurement, engineering, security, um, operation risks, and compliance. So it's pretty meaty part of our organization. And it's the, the largest organization in Amazon? I think it is, by numbers. So tell us a little bit more about your roots uh, and about life growing up back home in Italy. So I am Italian. I grew up um, very close to Lake Como. Um, and actually, that was a fantastic place to grow up um, because you could ski on the Alps, go to the lakes, uh, hike, you name it. Um, so it's a great um, way to, to enjoy uh, your childhood. Um, and my family was a working class family. My mother used to work in a factory. My dad was a male nurse. Um, and actually, most of the time, I spent my youth in a farm. Uh, the farm was my uncle and my auntie's farm. And there, I think, was, was great to grow up because you, you could learn so much spending your, your youth in a farm. So that's how uh, I grew up. Um, I enjoyed doing sport from a very early age, and I played soccer. I think, considering that I still play today on a Sunday, it's 45 years that I play soccer, <laughs> I can say. Are there any lessons from your childhood that you carry with you today? I think I met many uh, interesting people along the journey. Uh, teachers, professors, coaches. But I think the major learnings are coming from my parents. Uh, I think my mother was really great person in terms of interpersonal skills, her ability to extend the trust and being surrounded by, by the right people. Uh, her natural charisma were, were a big learning on how to interact and how to choose, actually, when to extend trust. And, and uh, you know, she was, she was great from that perspective. My dad was a tireless worker. Um, from him, I took the, the rigor, the integrity, the uh, grit um, in, in doing your, your work. And his passion for the job and his sense of duty were, were critical. And, I think from sport, I, I took the, the team element. You know, when I go back to, to my sport days, it's really interesting to see how, as a team, even if you were not great, you could beat, you know, better teams. I, I think soccer is a bit of a metaphor of life every now and then, so I like that. Yeah. And, and you know, growing up on that on that farm, that also really taught you a lot about you know things that you think about even today. Absolutely, you you learn how there are you know things you have to do, the the ability to to deliver on time, the ability to to respect your 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 work, your your duties, and how sometimes variables like weather can can change the the scenery for you. So. Uh, it's a great 
way to learn um, many things to stay on the farm. Can you speak a little bit about your time in university? So I, I decided to do a master uh, in engineering and production and uh, in Milan, my university is the Polytechnic of Milan. Uh, it's a great um, story because even to this date, I, I go back there quite often. I, I, I work with them on establishing their educational processes and we hire a lot of engineers from there. And my choice was because uh, it was a fairly, you know, demanding and tough school. Uh, was not too far from where I grew up, so I could commute. Another bonus. And the third thing is that I really enjoyed uh, to see how technology and processes concur in generating an output, a product, and. Uh, that university was very robust and, and valid from that perspective. You know, your career has spanned around 30 years in the logistics sector. Yeah. Did you always know that operations was for you? I think I learned around my second, third year of university that this was the right environment for me. Um, I also had the chance to meet a person, a gentleman that used to run Black & Decker for Europe and he invited me actually to go visit the factory um, and I decided to do my master thesis uh, on production in that company uh, whilst working and that was a, was a critical learning. So I, I think that was my, my passion and I could leverage my, if you want, nerd introvert nature in, in facing those challenges. When you look back at your career, were there any challenges uh, that you really had to overcome? Well, I think everyone faces challenges. I think for me it was really this transition from just being a pure, you know, well, you know, knowledgeable engineer to face execution. And the crucible experience was when I decided to take an operations execution role early 2000 and I, I entered this warehouse uh, with suit, tie and, and shiny shoes and I had 50 people laughing at me and whispering, it's not gonna last a week. That was my haha moment. Um, and I decided then to take a very pragmatic approach and I would work two shifts from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. I would just, you know, work in the warehouse with, with my warehouse uh, workforce and then from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. I would manage the place. And so step by step I learned how to manage uh, people and how to deal with people. So I got out of my introvert shell and geeky shell and, I, and I've learned, you know, something about managers. And so what inspired you to join Amazon? A couple of things. One, as a customer, I knew Amazon back uh, in the days I used to be based in the UK and I, and I was very appreciative of, of the service that Amazon offered. And I was really curious about it. The second thing was the opportunity to launch our Italian operation. So, uh, a senior vice president for uh, a consumer contacted me and said, look, we, we think you have the right profile, come do your interview process, and if everything goes well, you know, we have to launch Italy. And there, the, the big challenge was, we were talking May time, and the launch was September. And there was absolutely nothing. So it was a startup, a startup environment. And so how do you do it? Well, I think we, we started thinking, okay, let's, let's start processing what, what is, you know, required here. I was hired actually in July, early July, and we basically needed a legal entity, a, a warehouse, managers, um, our associates and workforce, time was tight. But 
I think w when you put your mind at it, and I think leveraging the way I, I grew up uh, was important, this mindset of you know, wanting to, to achieve your sense of duty, your sense of purpose, play the major role in defining in a very short period of time how to tackle that challenge. And so I started off hiring 10 managers, 50 warehouse workers, and we took a bus. We, we took a bus to France, and we spent two weeks in a fulfillment center there, uh, learning how to receive, how to stow, how to pick, pack, ship products. Went back to Italy end of August, and um, by the 10th of September, we launched uh, our operation. We shipped the first first book to Sicily, uh, art book to an Italian customer from an Italian warehouse. And so when you look at how that Italian operation alone has grown since you first you know, helped launch it. I mean, that's, that's uh, an impressive growth. I mean, when we started, we were, say, the first peak, uh, holiday peak, we were 200 individuals. And now there are more than 20,000 people. Um, 12 years later and if I think that you know our first meetings were by you know sitting on the floor with a laptop on your knees in a circle because we literally were waiting for chairs and desk to come uh, it's quite impressive so from 200 to 20,000 in back then you would you would pick uh, 100 units in an hour with your cart. It was called one picker per batch. You would do a tour with your little cart. Um, and now in, you know, with our robotic system, in 20 minutes you pick 100 units. You know, it shows you how technology helps you scale. Do you still bring that uh, startup innovative mentality to your work, you know, over a decade later? Yeah, every day. I think the problem is to temper that, you know, my team say that I should temper a bit, that, uh, oh, why don't we do this? Why don't we change that? So I think, I think it's important to, to keep progressing, you know, having this disruptive mindset of challenging the status quo, um, it's a feature for me. So, when you look now at, at kind of what inspired you throughout your career, um, are there things about your work that inspire you today at Amazon? Yes. Uh, very simply, the way we consider customers and the way we consider people. I think those two features are, are critical for me. Um, the reason why I constantly fall in love with, with my job and with Amazon and I really think how we can do things better is this foundational elements of customers and people that we, we, we do have and are our major feature. So what are your tips for leading large global teams? So I'm still learning on that, but I think the first and most important is, you know, going back to the soccer example is how you build your team. Your team needs to be tightly knit. Even if, you know, it's not a team of rock stars, it's still a very solid team. I, I, I like this concept. Um, the second one is really, at this scale, is the quality of your communication. And there, my team tells me I have to improve. Um, but it's important that you share where you're heading, why you're going there, um, and you insist on this element. And the third one is you, you help your teams to work really end-to-end. -end. You know, they have to, to do a job thinking, you know, what that means for someone else. Uh, upstream, downstream, how do we see the effects end-to-end? -end? In your current role, what are your kind of key goals for what you want to achieve, you know, today, this year, and then in the future? Um, I think this year, I would want to maintain a very robust safety record. I think the company is doing great, but there is always opportunity to improve and maintain a good high safety standard. 
Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is an opportunity for my org. Uh, we, we can do better in that space. Um, we need to nail our cost plan. Um, and I will say speed in France and Germany, we need to improve and DEA in North America, we have opportunities. D DEA being? Being delivery estimate accuracy. That's Amazon jargon. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of acronyms here in Amazon. A lot. Uh, and then in parallel to that, we need to start, you know, laying down the right foundations to lower our cost to serve. So rethinking how we operate our network. We started off with regionalization uh, and direct injection. I think we, we need to do other steps in the right direction. Now, looking back at your time here, are there yeah. any memories um, from your time at Amazon that really stand out to you? I think there are many. Uh, definitely launching countries is one of the best memories I have. Um, but then one that was really a big mountain to climb was uh, at the beginning of 2020 when the pandemic hit. You know, to, to find yourself in front of that mountain to climb was like, okay, are we going to make it? That was, um, was, was something. And to see how the teams started uh, to operate differently very quickly, our preparedness as a company with our habits of dealing with uh, holidays peak um, were foundational uh, to reinvent our way to work and to, to be resilient throughout the period. I also think that launching uh, robotics at scale in the UK in connecting end to end our first mile, middle mile, last mile operations in the UK was a, was a cornerstone uh, of my career. You know, this is my little operations paradise, the UK, because you can really connect the dots very quickly for, for our customers. So in 2020, yeah. the pandemic hits, mm -hmm. you take on this new job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can you paint the picture for our audience? Well, the picture was, you know, a week earlier, I got this phone call. You, you need to take and run Europe. And I'm like, OK, mm, let me start figuring that out. And one week later, the pandemic hit. And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> that is going to be difficult. But frankly, um, our habit to deal with, uh, with, with uh, peak holidays um, was like, you know, you get woken up in the middle of the night and you get told it is peak. And the day after, it, it is peak. And you deal with peak for two years. Um, that was the type of challenge. The, the quality of our teams, the resilience of our organization in that was mind-blowing. And to learn to operate differently, uh, remotely, and still being effective, um, and maintain, you know, a good grip on your balance because that was the thing that I was more afraid of. To see people, you know, working too much. Instead, I think we found a good balance as teams, and we we were even able to to have our Friday um, happy hour <laughs> over chime and. In, in those moments will will stick uh, for a long time. Chime being our video call system. Our video call system. So what is the common thread in your journey? I think if you look at my journey from, you know, starting off with hardworking parents, growing up in a farm, uh, facing the challenge to do a startup like Amazon and launching our Italian operations, or even the, you know, facing a pandemic one week into the job, the common word is grit, and how you develop that grit throughout those experiences. And, and that grit is really the common thread of every single way, uh, every single challenge I faced. Final question for you. What advice do you have for the future leaders of tomorrow? 
I think you need to start from a very early stage to connect technology and, and people. So you cannot do one and not the other. You need to, you need to work on both from a very early stage. How you, you manage people, how you engage people, how you understand people, and how you grow your technology, your know-how, um, and you connect those dots. That is a way to, to face the journey that is, is definitely advisable. Okay, rapid fire questions. Cool. <laughs> Spaghetti or ravioli? Spaghetti. Red or white wine? Rosso. Inter or AC Milan? <laughs> Inter, all my life. Movie or a book? Book. Seaside or mountains? Seaside with a glass of white wine. <laughs> Dog or cat? Dog. Pineapple on pizza? Absolutely not. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Steph, you're such an inspiration. Oh, thank you. Uh, really, really appreciate you being on with us. Thank you. Ciao. It was a pleasure. <laughs>